opened up for the church. Amen. Amen. We, the church. Amen. 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 And I'm excited to bring this good news tonight. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's indeed, again, I want to say an honor. And I'm humbled to have the opportunity to come before you tonight and tell the good news of Jesus. Amen. I feel like Paul. I have nothing else to tell you about except Jesus. Amen, Paul. Anything else that I ever knew, I have long forgotten. Yes, and I'm so glad that I have. Because everything that I was before was rotten. The things that I thought was so great about me that I liked the most, God hated them. And step by step, inch by inch, in the process of a life in Christ, amen, amen. He began to chisel away on his creation and make me into what he would have me to be. Amen. You can spend your whole life trying to be what you want to be just to find out you weren't even on the right road to the path that God had for greatness for you. I want to recap a little bit the last two messages because all these tie together. If you heard me on Thursday night, you heard me say that there's really a hard way to start and end in the word because it all confirms itself. Amen. 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 It's hard to just preach a message out of one verse or even one book because they all tie together. I want to recap these last two messages, Thursday and Friday night of this revival. The focus was on studying, knowing, believing, and putting into practice applying the Word of God through obedience into application or practical application, if you will, to our lives. The Word of God is our foundation. Can you agree on that? Amen. The devil has tried over and over again to nullify it, change it, and destroy our faith in it through lies, false doctrine, doctrines of devils, and through hirelings that the Bible calls, which are false teachers, preachers, shepherds. You know what a hireling is? When the wolf comes, they leave the flock to him. We have learned through last night and through Thursday night that God's word is what sustains us. Obedience to his word, walking in what he says, this is the line. It's not about if you cross the line because your flesh wants to or even just keeping you from sin. It's about God's divine purpose for our lives. Before sin happened, they were in full fellowship with God. But because of the disobedience and that curse that was levied, because of that sin of missing the bar, they could have had anything in the garden they wanted, but the one thing that they should not and could not do, God said, do not touch it, don't handle it, don't have conversation with it, have nothing to do with it. That was the very thing that they did. I want you to know that do not surprise God. God wasn't sitting in heaven and goes, ooh, I didn't see that coming. This has always been his plan. Amen. Satan thinks he wins at times. There's the, he, he really believes that he can take over the throne of God. Did you know that? Yeah. That's why he was kicked out of heaven. And he still believes it because he's the father of lies and the truth is not in him. If he did not believe that, he wouldn't have tried to kill Christ. He would have said, you can do anything you want, just don't spill his blood. He is out 
to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's making war with the church. And most of the church don't even know. It. We're just going through life, living our best lives, as they call it. Going in debt. Trying to catch up and stay with the Joneses, so to speak. When the Bible says to own up no man nothing. We have walked away from scripture. And I'm even hearing preachers and teachers today telling their congregations and parishioners that we must get caught up with the times and culture of our today. And stop trying to impose the times of the Old Testament and even Jesus' teachings. They say they were based on those times as well, which are not relevant today. There are even teachers and preachers right now, you can look them up online, that have huge followings that are telling people, if the disciples were to tell you today, if you asked them, they would say Jesus wasn't divine. He was not divine. This is the false doctrines going on. Do you know why that things like this is happening? And because it is being accepted in so many places? Because they took the word of God and they said, we can't understand it. So we're going to make some translations that are easy reads. But instead of making translations, they just made it in a way that they wanted to preach a message. And so many of them, the divinity has been taken out. The divineness of God, of the authority of God, who Jesus is. Come on. There's so much that has been watered down and taken out and misdistributed. You want to talk about some misinformation. The church has been full of misinformation through people that have refused to follow God and have Wanting to follow the flesh and build their own kingdom. Then you tell me whose kingdom that is. Satan offered everything, the world, to Jesus, did he not? Took him up on the high place. And he said, all of this can be yours. Not realizing that who he was offering everything to was the creator of it. <laughs> the devil has not changed his plan. He has been trying to stop the things of God, the people of God, to destroy the church even before the church was born. Jesus said unto Peter, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I pray for you. I'm going to tell you why I used Peter here just a minute. I came to tell you the truth of the word of God tonight in the full power of the Holy Ghost. God has not changed. His word is forever settled. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. There is not their interpretation of the Bible and your interpretation of the Bible. There is only what God says. Amen. It doesn't matter if it is liking to you or anyone else. God sets the mark and he alone says what sin is by missing the mark that he alone has said if you allow yourself to leave the bible teachings and biblical principles as the children of god then you are saying that god is alive and that everything that is written in his word is not our foundation how many knows you can't take anything out or add anything to right. Not only making the house of God, which was meant to be the house of prayer, into a house of merchandise, but now making the word of God through what was meant to be alive in us, the temple of God, into a lie and a false temple of the false God, just as the two sons of Aaron, who let the fire of God go out in the temple, and they thought they could simply replace it with strange fire. 
That's in Leviticus, the 10th chapter, if you want to look that up. But I come tonight to tell you good news. I come tonight to tell you what God has laid upon my heart and the message for the church. The second covenant of God. Yes, if you are a Gentile, you have no part in the first covenant. We had no hope, no way, and no opportunity for salvation. But thanks be to God Amen. that he made a way where there was no way. Amen. Thanks be to God that he made a way where there was no way. And I'll get to preaching here in a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> freely given, freely received. Amen. This is where we are tonight. This is what we're dealing with in the world tonight. This is what we're dealing with when the church seems to have no power. The church is a sleeping giant. But God is awakening the church. <laughs> if you would stand with me tonight for the reading of God's word. Verses 17 through 19. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you, right? Good to be here. What's up? 16. Amen. Amen. Matthew 16, 17 through 19. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar -Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The title of my message tonight is The Keys to the Kingdom of Heaven. Let us pray. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that our ears and our eyes would be open to see and to hear. And that our, our, our hearts and our minds, Lord, might receive what you are telling us tonight through your word and through your humble servant. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Through the scriptures to prove to you, through the word of God that Jesus gave to Peter, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. If it's in the word of God, it is our foundation, is it not? It is. If it's in the word of God, then it's our word to cling to, is it not? It is. If it's in the word of God, then all of it belongs to us. Amen. The plan of salvation for the church that Jesus was building is us. In us. And that whatever Peter would say when asked how to be saved in that hour and moment through the Holy Ghost would be the plan of salvation for the church. Now I want to explain to you just a little bit. When the disciples were walking with Jesus, Jesus would say things like, look upon me for salvation has come. When they asked Jesus, how come your disciples don't fast like John's disciples do? He said, because I'm with them. There'll come a day when they'll need to fast, but not as long as the Son of Man is with them. Come on, somebody. But all the time that Jesus walked with them and opened the scriptures to them and explained things to them and did miracle after miracle and even imparted to them and breathed the breath of life into them so that they could go and do some miracles as well, they still did not get converted and have understanding. I want you to know what happened and what took place. Peter stood up and he said, if I'll forsake you, I won't forsake you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. 
You don't know what spirit you're of. It was already written, come on somebody, that they would all forsake you. Maybe, maybe you didn't get that. It's already written in the word. Come on. Amen. The word's already settled. So you may think in your flesh, it won't be me. But it's already been written. You may not know what's going to happen to make you do it. But it's already settled. They all forsook him. They lost hope. You know why they lost hope? Because every time they went to lay hands on Jesus, they couldn't find him. If you were walking with him and saw him doing all those miracles, knowing that he was setting up the kingdom, even though you didn't understand what that was, they can't touch him. They can't kill him. He's the Messiah. Everything that had happened in the Old Testament led up to who Christ was. When the blood of animals could not do what only Christ could do. When all of heaven looked and could not find no one worthy in heaven, in the earth, under the earth. But here come the lamb walking that had been slain. And all of heaven begins to rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. Yes. Holy. Holy. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. The Remission only comes through bloodshed. With all of the sacrifices that they've done year after year for atonement only pushed the sins back, did not do away with the sins. And they were reminded every year of the old sins and the new. Through Jesus' blood, it washes them white as snow. And not only today, but the past, present, the future. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Through the blood of Christ, not only are you forgiven and your sins are remission, in remission, that means they can't be found. He forgets them. Amen. Oh, he forgets them. If you bring them up to him, he don't know what you're talking about. In Christ, you are a new creature. You are not who you were. The former things have died, passed away, forgotten. But in order for us to get to be the church through the new covenant, remember when Jesus he showed up at the Last Supper. He didn't bring a sacrifice. Because he was the sacrifice. And he said to his disciples, with great desire, I've longed to do this new thing with you. And he offered the bread. And he didn't hocus pocus it. It didn't turn into flesh. He didn't cut pieces of himself off. Come on. <laughs> Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but there's some religions out there who believe that mess. Amen. He said, take the bread. This is my body. Represents it. It's been broken for you. Take it, eat. He was the sacrifice. And the same with his blood. Blood of the new covenant. Shed for you. I will not partake in this again until then when we are all together. Come on, surprise. Amen. Amen. He passed the cup around. Man, I feel bullets. He passed the cup around. Right. And said, drink, for this is my blood. 
that shed for you. I believe that I can prove to you tonight through the scriptures that through the keys of the kingdom that were given to Peter, and that didn't happen until after he was converted. And I'm going to go through that tonight, if you'll bear with me. That whatever Peter would say when asked how to be saved in that hour and that moment, through the Holy Ghost, not Peter, but the Holy Ghost through Peter. Because remember, Jesus said, when thou art converted, strengthen the brother. That's right. That the plan of salvation, whatever he would say it would be, would be what it would be for the church. I want you to listen to this. Peter thought in himself he could do it. But when they lost hope, and Jesus was taken from them and he was crucified, you know what the first thing Peter said was? I go fishing. You know why? Because without hope in the flesh alone, you have no power, no authority, no life. You will go back to what you were. You will go back to the only things you know. If you're still practicing the things before Christ, you better get a hold of yourself. Amen. Because you ain't in a new life. There has to be change. If there's been no change, there's been no conversion. Come on. You heard me say this if you were here the first night. And you should know this by scripture. When conviction comes to us, that's the spirit of God giving us the ability to change. You can't change on your own. Right. If you could, you wouldn't need him. That's right. The law in itself was not enough. It only brought them to the place where they knew they had erred. I believe I will prove through the scripture tonight that once Peter was converted and received the keys to the kingdom of heaven, that whatever he would say in the Holy Ghost, in the hour, in that hour, it would be what it would be, what it would take for the church, and it would be the plan of salvation. If he had said to those that asked him what it took to be saved, to hop on one leg and bark like a dog, I believe that would have been the plan of salvation because the keys were given to him. Is that the Lord calling them? Is that? No. <laughs> I'm getting to it. I am convinced that once received through the Holy Ghost, Peter had to use those keys three times to unlock the plan of salvation for us all in the new covenant. The Jews first on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem, then to those Jews at Samaria, and then to us, the Gentiles, at Caesarea. I believe I can prove to you today through the precious word of God, in this message God has given me for the church, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. I told you in the beginning, you may not know me, but I don't do anything I can't prove by scripture. I don't preach opinions. I preach and teach the word of God. And I ain't afraid of history and I ain't afraid of science because the word will prove itself. It has never failed and it can't ever fail. I stand upon the word. I am a steward of the word and I am an ambassador to Christ. I am no longer of myself. All glory goes to God. If it seemeth that I have knowledge, it's because he's gave me knowledge. Amen. What I talked about last night, three years, Daniel, and those other three Hebrew children were in captivity. And God was mastering their skill and gift. When Paul, who was Saul at the time, <clears throat> he didn't get a name change, by the way. It's just... Hebrew and Greek. Saul and Paul, same person. When he met Jesus, he didn't just start preaching. He took three years. Instead of that for yourself. 
And even went after he started preaching and been preaching for a while, he went and met with the other disciples who were scared to death of him. Wouldn't you be? I don't think a one of them would have went running up. Paul, oh, Paul, it's been so long. We've been waiting. Is that him? Somebody slip rounds. Knock him in the head. He went to see what the other apostles were preaching. It's all in the Word. And you know what? They were preaching the same message he was, and yet he never walked with Christ. But he sure met him. Come on. He met him in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 16, 13 through 19. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Now some people would like to tell you that Peter had great insight and the Spirit was just all over him. But the truth is it was shadow and tight. Some things are just revealed. How do I know that? <clears throat> the same way I know that every time that God showed up in a body, it was in Christ. Yes. How do you know that? Because there was three Hebrew children thrown into the fire furnace. And the king said, did we not throw in three and four are up walking around and one is likened to the son of God? How did he know that? Come on, somebody. Well, Jesus hadn't been born yet. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Come on. In the beginning. That's what the Bible says. The Word was robed in flesh and dwelt among us. Today, we are the body. But one day, He's going to split the eastern sky in His full glory. Yes. And we're going to see him. But I, I got news for you. If you see it, you probably missed it. Because it's the uncertain sound. And only those that are ready are going to hear it. The Bible says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That's pretty fast. Come on. It ain't going to be time to get ready. I ain't going to preach on Bible night, but I'd like to. <laughs> the ten virgins, five are wise, five are foolish. What do you think they're talking about? They knew, they all, ten, knew where to get the oil. They knew how to keep their lamps trimmed and burning, but only five of them did it. And they didn't have enough oil in their lamps to share with the other five. And at the midnight hour, only those that were ready could go. It was shut to the others. Listen to this, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, I don't know what was going through Peter's mind at this moment, but I can tell you this. I'm a person, and I've had some big heads sometimes, and Peter seemed to be pretty zealous and get a pretty big head. When everybody else sat in the boat, Peter said, Lord, if that's you, bid me come. I'd hear another rest of them jumping up. 
They all thought it was a spirit or a ghost. Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> so he was quick. He's the one who grabbed the sword that took off the soldier's ear. Just imagine for a moment, if you will, you're there with your brothers and band of disciples. And I'm sure there's a little bit of competition. Don't we all have a little competition? Mm -hmm. If you don't believe that, then you better go back and read about the mother who tried to get her sons elevated. Right. <laughs> we want to sit on your right or left hand. When Jesus told him flesh and blood hadn't showed this to you, but God has shown you this. If he was sitting like this, I bet he would. <laughs> I don't know if he did that. But I just imagine what the other disciples were doing. What makes them so great? Don't we have a lot of that going in the church? No way. What? <laughs> we don't have people wanting ministries we have people wanting other people's ministries That's true. Amen. I just don't want to be a good singer I want to sing like that person I want to preach like that person why don't you just do your person Amen. that's why God called you he didn't call two of them that's right. he called you he don't need a mimic he needs obedience. Amen. He's looking for obedience Come on. rather than sacrifice. Right. He says, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you hear that? Amen. Not yet. What's coming? Play Pay close attention to verses 17 through 19. Jesus told Peter that he was blessed because God had imparted this great mystery into him. And then Jesus said in verse 18, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, what rock? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Through thee, Peter. Because Jesus knew we were going to be the body. Right. Jesus is the foundation, the cornerstone that the builders rejected. I will build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. He then said in verse 19, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Peter would later use those keys to open up the plan of salvation to us all, the church, the new covenant, through the Holy Ghost. Amen. The prophets of old have longed for this day to come. Angels desire to look into these things that we can receive. I sing a song sometimes. I'm the envy of angels. Because they desire to look into these things that they cannot. We were made a little lower than the angels. And yet God cherishes us. We're the only things he fashioned with his hands. Come on, somebody. The things that, that we cherish and we value, God makes pavement out of it. He values us. And he don't make junk. But what he makes is beautiful. And he, his desire is to be in fellowship. Full fellowship. With us. His desire. He can have anything he wants. And yet he doesn't force that desire. Luke 24. 45-53. Then he opened their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. How many can read that with me? Then he opened their understanding 
They could not understand if he did not open. That's why it's so important that this mind of Christ be in you. The scriptures were written under the Holy Ghost, under the power, the inspiration of the Spirit of God. In order to get to what Paul calls the hidden mysteries, you can't just read it like a book. You can get good nuggets out of it, but that's not going to make you the new covenant. You've got to follow in obedience through the hidden mysteries that can only be opened up to us, our understanding through the Spirit of God, that they might understand the Scriptures. Verse 46 says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, Somebody say, Thus it is written. Thus it is written. And thus it behold Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Where did it have to start? Jerusalem. Who came to bring us life? And did he come just to bring us life, or was it more than that? Amen. King James Version says abundantly, which means to the full. Not fool. Full. I know I got a little sinus. We'll make sure you hear my words right. We have a, I have a great friend of mine that comes from Uganda. And we get tickled at one another because nine years now, we've been, every year he comes, and I still can't understand him as good. I, I can understand him better, but he still can't understand me at all. <laughs> he don't understand Red. He's talking about. But his English Sam. is getting much better, Sam. and mine apparently is not. Yeah. <laughs> the one that came here—that's who he's talking about. Sam. Brother Sam. Brother Samuel, yeah, y'all know Brother Samuel. He's, yeah. he's preached here. Yeah, I love Samuel, and. Uh, I'll tell you that story sometime. But <laughs> hey, y'all know I got stories. So, we just love to have a good time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And isn't that what we're supposed to do? Have the joy of the Lord? Amen. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Listen to this. And ye are witnesses of these things. So let me back up. And that repentance and remission of sins, remission of sins, they're going to be gone. That hadn't happened before. You hear me? Should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. What's the promise? Come on. What's the promise? He said that I'm going to go away. Greater things than these that you do because I go away. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not true, I would have told you so. He ain't going to build you a mansion. He went away to prepare a place for us to come to be with him also. And in that place, we're not just going to be residents. We're heirs. Joint heirs to the throne. He said, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, I will not leave you comfortless, will come in my name and testify of me. And it will give you power. Right. You will be endued with power from on high. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye. In the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them. And he was parted from them. And carried up into heaven. Verse 52. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. That's what it says. Amen. And they were continually in the temple. 
We can't hardly get people to come to church on Sunday anymore. That's right. When Jesus had been taken from them before, they went back to their former lives. But this time, he had opened the scriptures up to them. And they began to have understanding they never had before. I'm going to tell you something. You can tell somebody every day, all the day long, that Jesus loves them. And if they've never experienced his love, they don't know what you're talking about. Because our love is not pure. The word's been thrown around so much that people don't even know what the word really means anymore. You can tell people that God is a father to the fatherless. If they never had a father, they don't know what you're talking about. But I am here to tell you that when you meet him, you don't need any more explanation. Because he's alive. Feel him. Even though we don't walk by feeling, we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. I'm so glad we can feel him. I'm so glad that we can feel him. Do you hear me? Amen. When everybody got to see him except the one disciple, he came back for the one and told him to do the very things that he said he would not believe until he could do it. How much does he love us? He didn't come back and scold Thomas. He says, handle me. We first have to understand that Jesus came to them under the law. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four epistles are under the law. You know that. Right. He came to the Jews first. Even when he healed them, he told them to go and do what was under the law. Do y'all know that? He was under the law. Now, he took moments and he went and showed himself to people he shouldn't have, according to the law. But what law was that? Come on. The law of man. They had the Talmud law and the Torah. He went and spoke to a Samaritan woman, which was forbidden. You know what I think is great about the woman at the well? He went there and waited on her to get her. That's how important she was to him. When she was a dog to everybody else. He said, if you knew who was here in front of you. Come on. I'd give you, I'd give you water. Somebody read that last night. <laughs> Come on. Or you'll never thirst again. We are Gentiles. Unless you were born a Jew or Hebrew, under the law, we have no way of salvation under the first covenant. There's nowhere and no way that we can or could have been saved under the first covenant. But Jesus made a way for us and to whomsoever would come through himself of the second covenant. And through this new covenant, he became our sacrifice. And our only way to heaven, to the Father, is only through Jesus. Amen? While he walked among them, he said, look upon me for salvation. But he knew that he was going to be leaving. Come on. I want you to know something. When he went to John the Baptist, he didn't go with any sin. He didn't need to be baptized because he had sin. Amen. He had to fulfill scripture. Right. And it had to be through ordination of the Levitical priesthood. That's right. And guess who wasn't allowed under the Levitical priesthood to be in the temple? <laughs> but that didn't stop Jesus from fulfilling the scripture. Come on. He didn't just pick another and go to the temple and say, anybody will do. Come on, somebody. He went to John the Baptist and fulfilled scripture. John said, I'm not worthy. He said, this must be. I'm not under the Levitical priesthood. I'm not under Melchizedek. Come on, somebody. But I've got to fulfill the law that I wrote. Come on. And they brought the woman in adultery before him. Where was the man at that they caught? 
He's probably holding a rock standing behind somebody. I'll be the first one to bail her so she don't. <laughs> Jesus, the Bible says, knelt down and wrote on the ground. I did a study on that one time. Did you know that city jumped on a rock and there's not any earth? When he began to write, wasn't writing in sand. He showed them the very finger that I wrote the law on tablets of stone. And you bring the law to me, I am the law. Yes. Yes. Ye who is without sin cast the first stone. How many knows he was the word? Yes. Turn with me to Acts, first chapter. One through five. <clears throat> I love this. Jesus had told them he wouldn't be with them much longer. But he made a way to not just be God with us. But God in us. Amen. Acts 1, 1 through 5. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. The former treaties is the Gospel of Luke, if you want to know. Or if you didn't know. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, He ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I want to take you back to just a moment when Nicodemus, the high priest, who came in secret. Because he believed Jesus was the Messiah, but he couldn't say it openly. There was so much opposition. So much in the religious sects that was against him. Because he did so many things against their traditions. And he claimed to be equal with God. <clears throat> he met with Jesus. And he said, what are you going to do to be saved? Jesus said, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Can a man enter back into his mother's womb? This is the birth. Come on. Promise. This is what God had intended before the garden was formed. God's not making this up as he goes. You realize that, right? God's not held by time. So he's in the beginning right now. He's at the end right now. And he's right here with us. Amen. God's not about to do anything. You'll hear me say that a lot. He's already done it. We've got to catch up to the season of receiving. We've got to catch up to the, se the season of, of getting what God has already done. To accept the truth through the word of God, which is our foundation. To stand upon the things of God regardless of what anybody else says. If they disagree with you, if none go with me, still I will follow. I have decided to follow him. Glory to God. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria 
and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts 1, 13 through 14. And when they were coming in, they went up into an upper room where both, both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James and the son, the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Man, we should probably stop right there. They all continued in one accord. Amen. I just want to say this about this church. This is a loving church. Amen. We have felt much love in this church. Amen. And that is a reflection of this church and the ministry in this church. Yes. There's a heart for God here. Yes. You can see it. You can feel it. You know it. My spirit recognizes. Yes. Pastor Russ and I had a conversation just in texting, not even a voice conversation, and you can still sense the spirit of God, the unity, Amen. the fellowship. Amen. Come on. Amen. Don't you know it? When you see it? It's hard to see what you see, right? God wants to take the church. And hit us with the atonement. That's going to elevate the church to a place that is truly dead to sin. The church as a whole has been struggling. It came in strong. It's going to go out strong. Because God has promised. Amen. He promised we'd be dead to sin. He promised that we'd have power. And if He cannot lie, it's coming. The Bible says in 14, verse 14, all, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brethren. What nobody left out. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire. Cloven means divided. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now I want to share with you tonight. If they already had the Spirit, what were they waiting on? The fulfillment of the baptism of the Holy Ghost in power in fire. The Spirit of God comes to you and brings conviction. But once you have been covered by the blood, God wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. To infill you. To come to a mind. To live. To stay. To give us power not only over sin, but over ourselves. Over your flesh. That that I could not do, now I can do. I can do nothing without Him. But through Him, I can do all things through Christ. Because it's Him. He does the work. I'm just the vessel. I don't know about you, but I am sold out to God. Whatever He wants to do with me, I'm okay with that. If He needs to crush me, the poor out of me, so be it. If He's got to put me flat on my back, 
to get my attention, I welcome it. Mm. Holy, holy, holy. Worthy. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. The Bible says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I've heard a lot this week, and I've even talked about it myself, and I talk about it all the time. I don't know how anybody can be satisfied with God. I can't get enough. When I go to bed at night, my first thought is, I can't wait to see you in the morning. Man, we're the church of the living God. We are the body of Christ. Amen. We are the people of God. There's a war between two kingdoms. And this kingdom here is not ours. Our kingdom is to come. Jesus came talking about the kingdom of God. I'd never heard of that before. That's our kingdom. This world is going to pass away. There'll be a new heaven. And a new earth, according to scripture. Living and trying to keep this place up. There's some people who think they're going to inherit this thing. You know why? Because the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, you can have it. There's a new one coming. Come on. This is not my kingdom. I am not of this world. I may be in it, but I am not of it. Amen. For I've been changed. Yes. I am no longer who I was. Yes. Now this was the fulfillment of prophecy in the Old Testament where God said, With stammering lips and other tongues will I speak through my people. Isaiah 28, 11 through 12. And fulfillment of the words of Jesus in the New Testament. He said, I did not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. Yes. Matthew 5, 17 through 20. And when he said, the promise is coming to you through the Holy Ghost, which will come in my name and testify of me. How many knows there's one God? Yes. Yes. Even the devils in hell know that tremble. Yes. Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. They're all one. There's only one God. There's not three thrones. Come on, somebody. Yes. We have been given salvation through Jesus, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. Yes. He paid the price. He shed his blood. He didn't halfway do it. He went all the way. No one else could do it. He did that for us. Thank it's you. through his name. All authority lies. All power. And it's in his name. That's what the word says. Yes. Then when they received of the promise in Acts... The second chapter, people, once it was news abroad, came to see. Peter then began to preach to them. He knew that Jesus had appointed him to be the one to instruct them all because of what Jesus had told him. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And in another place, Jesus told him, Peter, once thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. This was the, that appointment in Luke 22, 31 through 32. If you read the rest of that chapter in Acts, Peter begins to preach. But I want you to understand something. It's the Holy Ghost preaching. Amen. When God calls you to a calling, he does it through you. Right. If you could do it, you wouldn't need him. When I have young ministers that come to me and say, how do you get up and preach? 
I don't. I can't preach. But I know who can. When somebody comes to me and says, how can you teach? I can. But he can. When somebody comes to me and says, I need counseling. I ain't a counselor. But I know one. I will pray to my God. Come on, somebody. Daniel said, don't even tell me the dream. I will pray. He will give me the dream and the interpretation. Amen. These things cannot be done in yourself. First, it takes the calling, faith. First, it takes faith in God to even receive the calling. Faith <coughs> to accept the calling and to know that it's not you doing the work. It's him doing the work through you. Amen. I'm going to skip on down because we're short on time. Peter preached the whole message. Verse 36, he says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. Who do you think did that? The Messiah walked with them and they didn't recognize him. Guess who blinded them? They didn't even crucify him on their own. Do you hear me? Don't be blaming them for crucifying. If it wasn't for him being crucified, we wouldn't have an opportunity. That's right. He didn't do away with the first covenant. But he made a second covenant that the first covenant can be a part of. And once the second covenant has been resurrected, he's coming back to that which is first that's been made last. He blinded them for a season so they could not see who he was because they had to crucify him. Because he came unto his own and his own rejected him. As it is written. Mm -hmm. Suffered these things so we could be free. <coughs> Jesus did not take the scourging and the beating and be crucified so we would stay in our condition. He did it so we would be free. He did it so we would be free. Free from the bondage and the chains and the curse of sin. They were pricked in their hearts because they began to see. And they had not seen before. But thankfully, when Jesus was hanging on that tree... He said, Father, forgive them. Come on. If he hadn't forgave them, they'd be stuck in that condition. They pricked in their hearts. They begin to see. Because he just told them that same Jesus you crucified has been made Christ and Lord. He said, you crucified, right? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brother, what shall we do? Then Peter gave them and us all the plan of salvation with the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to show you something. This was the first lock that he unlocked to the Jews first there in Jerusalem. Acts 2, 38 through 47. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Without his blood there is no remission. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift freely given. When people say, well, it's not mine, it's a gift freely given. Freely given, receive it. Amen. Amen. For the promise is unto you 
and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as are, or as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, I want to take you back for a minute because God doesn't leave anything undone. There were 3,000 souls that were lost when the law was written. The earth swallowed them up, you remember? And now 3,000 souls have been added back. If you want to understand what, what the whole point about Speaking in other tongues is you got to understand the Tower of Babel. Right. They were all of one language. Yes. They were building a tower mm -hmm. to reach heaven on their terms. And God said, if we don't stop them, they'll do it. What could withstand them? So he went down and separated them. He confounded their language so that one person standing next to another could not understand. And I want to show you the beauty of what God did. When he set on, them, set on them as a fire in the upper room with the Holy Ghost, with cloven tongues, that meant, meant divided. He was speaking out of them. The Holy Ghost was speaking out of them through their mouths, every language, and a heavenly language. And every man Scripture says they came from abroad. Every nation represented heard in their own tongue. Yes. Amen. You can go back and read that in the second chapter. What man tried to do and could not do, God fulfilled in his plan yes. and made us one. Come on, somebody. Yes. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost will pray and utter things out of you that you don't even know to pray for. Amen. We need to be baptized in it. Amen. In the full power of it. If you've never received the full power of the baptism, you can have it. Yes. It's yours. Yes. It's very simple. Receive it. It's freely given. It's our promise. Amen. He made it for us. I want to break this down for you so you have more understanding. They that had to receive were baptized the same day and were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, which is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Right. How many knows that the book of Acts is not the Acts of the Apostles, it's the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the Apostles? Right. Yes. Right. I'm going to explain that a little bit more here in a minute, if you'll bear with me. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things in common. And I'm going to skip on down here, because I want to show you the second lock that God unlocked. Acts 8, chapter 8, 4 through 23. Acts 8, 4 through 23. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, thinking <coughs> out that himself was some great one. How many knows that there's always a counterfeit? Right. To whom they all had gave or they all gave heed from the least and the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. 
And to him they had regard because that a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. I want to share with you, just because somebody believes and just because somebody gets baptized, don't mean that they have changed. There has to be a change. He followed with Philip. He was with them. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. This is the second law. How come Philip couldn't do it? He didn't have the keys. <laughs> Peter had to come. Do you hear me? Philip had preached Christ to them, but they could not receive the promise until the lock was unlocked. Peter came. Then they laid their hands on them. <clears throat> And they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that they're laying on of apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. There had been no change in Simon. And we can go on and on to talk about what happened from that point on. But you need to understand something. There's going to be a lot of people that sit on the pew with you. There's going to be a lot of people that agree with you. But that don't mean that their heart's been changed. There are going to be many tares that grow up with the wheat. I cannot do the things of God. Only God can do the things of God, but he chooses to do it through us Amen. because we are the body through his spirit. You cannot deny when you feel the spirit of God. It'll change you forever. Until I come to know him as my God, he introduced himself to me by slaying me in the spirit. For three hours. And I ain't never been the same. And I don't want to be. Amen. There's things I believe, but now I know. There's a difference between hope and assurance. Come on. Now I know that I know that I know that I know. I know that the promise of God is for us all. If I can receive it, Anybody. That's right. Because yeah. I did not deserve it. Yeah. Come on. We cannot make ourselves worthy, but he deems us yes. worthy. <clears throat> Here's the third and final lock that had to be unlocked through Peter, who was given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Here is the promise. This is the promise to us, the Gentiles, that was given to whomsoever our Lord God should call. And for time, I'm not going to read through all those, but you can read these chapters or these verses in this chapter. It's Acts chapter 10, 1 through 48. Is it 10? No, it's 10. Acts 10, 1 through 48. This is how I know the Holy Ghost preached on the day of Pentecost and not Peter. Because Peter still didn't understand that it was to everybody. Three times God had to show him in a vision. What I have cleansed, call no man unclean. And while he was pondering on the vision, 
two men come for him. I want to read a little bit about this certain man. Acts 10, verse 1. In Caesarea, called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. First thing you need to understand is, in the Jews' eyes, he shouldn't even have been praying to God. He's a Gentile. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. Let me back up. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. How many knows God knows your name? Remember when he sent those out? When Jesus sent them out and they came back and they said, even the spirits are subject to us. He said, rejoice not that they are subject to you, but rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. They know your name. God knows your name. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when, they, and when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. He became hungry, and this is when he saw the vision. And three times God showed it to him. And Peter still didn't have understanding. Verse 13 says this, And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, verse 18, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them. Doubting nothing, for I have sent them. I wonder if we quit relying on technology and start spending time with God if we'd have some insight to what's happening. I quit watching the news a long time ago because I don't care what they have to say. I trust what the Word of God has to say, and I'm a winner either way. I am not looking for the end time destruction. I'm looking for the end time victory. Because the church is triumphant. The great and terrible day it said in the Old Testament in the book of Joel. But Peter said in the New Testament the great and notable day. That's in the second chapter of Acts. It changed. Why? Because now we escape death. Free from the pain of death. Only through Christ Jesus. I have experienced. You heard my testimony a little bit. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of all good report among all the nations of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house 
and to hear words of thee. Verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into the Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And a, as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up! I myself also am a man. And he, as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know how that it is unlawful. Hear me. It is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. This is the same one that just preached. The promise is to everybody. But he didn't get it. Come on. You know that it is unlawful for an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Now it's all starting to make sense. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. Now I don't know how long Cornelius had been praying. But he must have been praying for this for a while. For God to have heard the prayers and to come down with the answer. See there's a time and a season for everything. And you got to wait for that timing. And wait for that season. Maybe he was praying all this before the promise was given on the day of Pentecost. I don't know. But I do know this. That Peter had three locks to unlock. And he was at the third one. And he had the key ready. And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. And he is lost in the house of the Simon a tanner, one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And when we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree, him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink after him or drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to judge of quick and dead, to give to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission Amen. of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. First to the Jew at Jerusalem, then to those abroad. Thank you, Jesus. And finally, we who were 
nothing. Yes. Lastly, to us. Man, that ought to make you shout. Come on. If that don't stir your soul, your spoon fell out of your bowl. That's right. Hallelujah, Father. Glory! That's right. did everything for you and for me. So when people tell me I can't cease from sitting, that's a lie. When people tell me that I'm just a sinner saved by grace, that's a lie. You are a saint. You have been changed. I am no longer. The Bible says for the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And whatever you speak out of your mouth, you are pronouncing on yourself. Quit believing these things and start speaking truth and believe in the positive God. I am who He says I am. I have what He says I have. I don't even have to take care of me. He's mindful of me. We think that we're supposed to supply our own way and make our own way. And we do all these things. I, I met a pastor one time that never wanted to be called pastor. But as soon as he got his doctorate, he wanted that on everything. You better reference him like that because he earned it. And I'm very... It's very hard for me to keep silent. I saw him in a restaurant one day. He said, hey, brother, how are you doing? I said, not good. I got a problem. I want to know why you think that your doctor is more important than your calling. Because you didn't earn it. Do you know who Blend died for it? We better get back to honoring the things of God. We better get back to respecting the things of God. Respecting the house of God. Respecting the ministry. Respecting the saints. Come on, respecting one another. This world is going straight to hell because it's lost its sight. This country was founded in God we trust. And it's time the church rose up and took back what God has given us. To the power of the Holy Ghost. so much. 
I ain't giving up nothing. He's taking things away from me that's been holding me down. Why are you trying to hold on to things and God's trying to raise you up? Well, you know, I got some living to do. You don't know what living is. I just started living. I found me a brand new life. Changed my direction. Washed away all my strife. I'm a newborn believer. Found holy in filling. <laughs> no time to doubt, no time to pout. Come on, why don't you just start living? Amen. This is the time. Yes, this is the hour. I come to tell you tonight that God wants to resurrect you up. Yeah. That same spirit that resurrected yeah. Jesus from the grave wants to resurrect you up in power. <laughs> there is no limit in God. <laughs> he has no limit. We put limitations on God. He has no limitations. There is no limit to what you can have. There is no limit to what he will do if you will trust him. God had changed. This is his word. This ain't my words. You can read it for yourself. I purposely read the scriptures and didn't just tell you about it. Not that you hadn't heard it before. Maybe some hadn't. But I've heard lots of scriptures and read lots of scriptures and the light didn't come on until the light came on. I know the word is a lie. Amen. What the word of God does for you today, it still means that but sometime in the future, it's going to have something else for you also. Because right. right. it's alive. You can always dip into the well. Come on. That's right. The well never runs empty. It never runs dry. Through his word, he has promised us. Did you hear me? God has promised. And he can't lie. A triple dog dare you. Ooh. You can't, you can't Ooh. back up on a triple dog. Right. A triple dog dare you to try Amen. the things of God Amen. to the fullest. Amen. You'll see. If you don't already know, he's full of power. Yes. How many felt the power of God? He wants to do more than just save you. We are redeemed, set back in our rightful place that God created us for, to be in full fellowship with Him. <laughs> There are people in this congregation right now that God wants to use right. to counsel someone okay. out of suicide. Yes. That God wants to use to heal someone. Yes. That God wants to use to liberate someone. Right. To, to take somebody that seems broken and, and let them see their value. Yes. There are people right here tonight that God wants to have a relationship so deep with that you think you want it. You want it because he put that in there because he wants it. That's right. Amen. He wants it so bad that you forsake everything else but him. Amen. He's a jealous God. That's right. He won't be second. That's right. He will only be first in your life. Come on. That's right. Amen. If you'll allow him. Right. It has indeed been my honor and privilege to come and to share the word of God as it come to me through these wonderful scriptures of the Bible with you. It has indeed been a joy of my life.
I hope you got something out of this. I hope you feel revived. You know revival's for the saints, not for the world, not for the lost. We should be supercharged to go out and reach the lost. That's what it's about. Revival is to supercharge us. I hope that the word has been like spiritual paddles. And that you have been electrified into a heartbeat. Ready to just jump up out of that bed and go out and reach the lost. This is the hour. This is the time. Before it's too late. Don't let a minute waste. I know the church has spent many years trying to stay saved. When the church should be saved and reach the lost. It's time to get past that. It's time to be the church triumphant. This is the day. This is the hour. God is here tonight. If you have a need, all you got to do is tell him. Present your petition before the Lord. We sing a song. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Amen. If you need a healing, tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. He's ready. It ain't about a feeling. It's about faith, knowing that God's already done the work. That's right. Amen. Amen. Can we hear it? Huh? Can we hear it? <laughs> you want to hear it? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I will try to. <laughs> It's a little hard to do those songs without drumming. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we need <laughs> 